you might have been using some of these excuses for not having a garden. Say, you live in an urban environment and there's just not room, or there's just not time, or you don't like weeding, or you only have a gravel driveway to work with, or the climate is just terrible where you are. Well, I want you to throw all of those excuses out the window today and listen to just a few of the reasons and the easiness that it is for you to try hay bale gardening. <laughs> Stay with us. We all need to have a garden. I think we should have one that we can see, that we can get our hands on, that's up close, but also one that's covert, that's incognito a little bit. And we'll talk more on that in another future episode. But today I wanna to talk to you about the, the perfect kind of garden if you happen to be in an urban environment where you just don't have land to work with, or perhaps you have terrible land to work with, even though you have plenty of it. Well. The answer to that is going to be a hay bale garden. And I'll say right now on the front end that we call it a hay bale garden, but it's really not hay at all. It's straw and it's just gotten the name hay bale gardening, I guess, because we all know that word and, and call it that most commonly, but it's actually straw bales. So let's just jump right in. First of all, I have got a terrible spot for a garden, even though you see a beautiful uh, yard behind me, the part that is in the sunlight, which is most important, <laughs> it used to be all graveled. So no matter what I have done to it over the years, and I do every year put a garden in anyway, the dirt, the soil is just still not high quality and there are so many rocks everywhere. So this year, just for fun, I'm putting in a hay bale garden. Let me tell you just a couple of the benefits of that. First of all, it's a raised garden. Who doesn't love a raised garden? So if I happen to be in a wheelchair, I could access it. If I don't like getting down on my hands and knees because I've, I have arthritis, this is the perfect solution for someone like uh, that who suffers from not being able to get down clear to the ground to work the soil. This is automatically a raised garden. It also can be for terrible soil. In fact, if you just have a gravel driveway with a little bit of space, you can actually just put the hay bales or the straw bales right on the gravel driveway and have just as good a garden as the lady next door. <laughs> also, it requires very little effort once we get it going. So we're going to talk through the effort we're putting on the front end. That's why you don't see any plants here today. We're going to talk through the way to prepare this for success. And then in future weeks, you'll see as we get the garden going and have some more episodes that cover some of the wonderful things that you can do with it once you've got it established. So these are a couple of things to keep in mind. Find yourself a flat enough spot that you can have a garden and then kind of measure it out. If you've got a good measuring tape or can borrow one, find out how much space you have to deal with. Then, go ahead and find some good graph paper and start mapping it out just like a little blueprint. This is so much fun. Figure out exactly how much space you have to work with and then find out the bales that you're going to get. Now, the standard is about what you see here that I've got and these are 36 inches long by two feet wide and about 18 inches uh, in their other dimension. So. I can measure it out carefully on graph paper and then plan how I'm going to do it. I'll know exactly how many I need to pick up. And I would recommend that you get just one or two extras, extras because when you do, you might need some for the ground that's in between the hay bales. And you might have one that's poorly packed and you need to replace it with one that's nice and sturdy and, and can take the weight of those plants that you're going to have in the garden. Now, I wanna show you just a quick picture of what it's gonna look like a year from now. So by next spring, these are going to have broken down beautifully, though it looks probably ugly to you, but beautifully these will break down and make a wonderful kind of compost for your garden area in the future. So you may be able to have soil there that you can use in the future. But for this year, you will plant right in the top of each of these hay bales. It's, it's fantastic. Now, let me explain that about the hay and straw thing. You can use either one. So whatever you have available, use that. Just keep in mind, if you use hay bale, 
It's actually going to have a lot of seeds in it from a lot of different alfalfa and whatever else was in that field. And so you're probably going to have kind of like a chia pet growing here in just a few days once you get this started getting water to it. Now, it's going to happen with a straw bale as well, but the straw bales are generally the better option. These that I have here are wheat straw. So from a wheat field of a local farmer, the wheat has been harvested, and then this is actually the, the chaff. This is what's left over that they can't use other ways. It's often used for bedding in a stable or a barn, but it's also perfect for gardening because it doesn't have quite so many seeds and it's going to be uh, less treated with herbicides and pesticides and all of that and it was grown locally. So I'm thankful for what I've got and that's kind of what you wanna get your hands on is some sort of wheat straw bales is kind of what you're going to ask for or the kind that would be used for bedding in a barn. Okay, once you've got your bales and you get them here, you're going to want to prepare the place where they're going to go. So that flat area, if by chance it's your yard, I would recommend while it's still kind of winter and everything's kind of dark and um, hasn't come to life yet, go ahead and burn it off. So this whole area that you see here, I went ahead and burned. And it took me a couple of days, a couple of tries because already spring was coming and there was grass coming through. But I burned the whole area off just to get it clear down to the dirt. Then if you have something to put under the bales, it's going to help you. It could be as simple as newspaper. So if you just lay out newspaper under each bale, that's perfect. Some people like cardboard boxes. Some people even use plastic and I don't really like plastic. It'll keep the weeds out of the way, but it's going to be in your way. It's going to come out. It's just a big old hassle and you're going to regret it. <laughs> I would recommend something biodegradable if you've got it that just inhibits the weeds a little bit below the hay bales or straw bales. However, if you don't have anything at all, that's just fine too. You do what you can, but lay them out as they need to be and lay them as tight together as you can. And also, as you've noticed, you always want the twine of them to run along the sides. You don't want it to be laying face up or, or, or with the side up, I suppose, where the twine is facing the sky. You don't want that. You want the skinny slender side facing up and preferably you want to be able to look down into the straw. You want the straw to be facing up so that you can dig your fingers into it easily, so you can plant in it easily. It soaks the water all the way down to the bottom of the bale and is the right orientation. Now, incidentally, these straw bales that I have here were rebaled because the farmer had made great big round bales out of them. Then he took those apart and rebaled them into little squares. So I have got no good orientation on these bales at all. They're a hodgepodge. There is no up, down, right or left at all, but that's just fine. I will treat them and prepare them and they're gonna be just fine. I just want you to know that in the event that you can't get the perfect scenario, do it anyway and you're still gonna get good results. Okay, also you wanna look at what plants you choose. So, of course, my favorite is from Baker, Baker uh, Creek, heirloom seed catalog. They are fantastic. I think they're out of Missouri in the United States. Go ahead and go through that catalog, pick out your favorite ones that you're going to plant this year, get them ordered and here. And if you can start them in your windowsill before you even get this going, because it's going to take us about two weeks to get all of these hay bales ready to be planted. So if you start all your seeds in the windowsill, they will be in the perfect shape and ready for you to plant little seedlings into the dirt, into the tops of these bales in about two weeks from now. Okay, let me also just say this, there are some plants that grow great in hay bales and others that, uh, they go okay, but they're not phenomenal. Like corn, don't plant corn <laughs> in hay bales. It's just gonna be too tall and the wind is gonna take it down. So you want corn to be planted sturdy in the soil if you're going to plant tall corn. Also, I've heard that it's recommended if you're going to plant tomato plants, 
Um, definitely have a cage for them if you're going to plant them in the hay bales and if you can get the dwarf variety that's going to be a smaller compact tomato plant that's going to hold up a lot easier to the winds that might blow through uh, instead of a real tall spindly one that's just going to easily get out of hand and maybe fall over in the process but i would also just say this root vegetables some of them do great um, but you need to make sure that you've prepared it well so that they can kind of grow straight down. If carrots are inhibited, you know they don't grow long and straight. They kind of get all gnarly looking. And um, potatoes and things like that, they'll grow just fine so long as you've prepared the straw bales very well ahead of time. And the other plant I would just say that it would be important for you to note on the front end, any kind of vining plant Anything that's going to crawl all over the place and spread its arms everywhere like cucumbers, squash, any kind of melons, pumpkins, all of those like lots of room to breathe. So you can plant them and they'll do just great in a hay bale garden. But if you do, you're going to want to come up with a plan to give them extra space to spread out all over the sides and down into the area where you might need to walk or create a trellis such that can handle the weight of those and go ahead and train them from their earliest days to climb up onto that trellis. A lot of people like to put nice T fence posts at the ends of their rows of um, straw bales and then you can run wire in between them to create a kind of a wall style trellis all the way up. That's a good way to do it. Another way that I really would love to, and I've started the process behind me, I don't know if you can see that, I've got actually three old real estate signs that um, are too rusted to use in front of houses anymore, but I've taken the sign part out and just used the nice metal frames, but also you could use fence posts for that as well. I just wanted to use what I had because it can get very cost prohibitive to have to buy everything new each year. So I've started those at the side and what I'll do is buy three cattle panels, and I'll show you those in a future episode, but train that cattle panel to be in a, in a rounded arch over my head, and then be secured next to these hay bales in the middle with uh, some fence posts. And that's why you always want to have plenty of zip ties on hand, because that's how you'll secure it. Um, zip ties are an absolute essential when you're going to have any kind of garden where you need trellises or to it, it's like the gardener's duct tape these are just absolutely imperative to have on hand okay so i'll take and take those cattle panels and i'll show you that in a future episode but create a nice trellis you can do it with smaller things smaller types of fencing but often it can't hold the weight of those melons and cucumbers and things when they start pulling down on it. The very heavy ones, you're going to need to find a creative way to create like a little hammock for a melon to grow into, or some people use uh, nylons that have gotten ripped and don't need to be used anymore. You could use those, but you get creative and find ways to help it hold up the weight. And you'll see us do that in the future. So that's what you'll want if you have heavy plants that like to vine it'll sure be a, a, a space saver for you if you're wanting to utilize all of the hay bales for your planting also you're going to want to have one of these handy dandy little uh, thermometers this is just a kitchen thermometer but it's an instant one some people use the ones with a bigger face on them that's called a meat thermometer i think this is just a universal instant thermometer for your kitchen and it has this metal end on it that you can jam right down into the, hay, uh, the, the straw bale. It reaches down in there far enough that it's gonna tell us the temperature. Because over the next 14 days, I'll talk you through what we're gonna do to prepare these for planting in 14 days. But in the process, as we prepare them, the temperature is gonna get higher and higher and higher inside. That core temperature is going to exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. It can get up to 130 degrees even, but then it'll start coming back down. And 
that's part of the process of preparing these. Keep in mind you would never want to just plant your plants in them at the, at the front end of things and then see how it goes because as they heat up, they're gonna kill all those baby rootlets that are trying to grow into the, the straw bales. You want to have it already uh, back into a nice temperature zone. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's talk through the next 14 days. <laughs> I'm gonna start with this. I need to make sure I have some nitrogen fertilizer on hand. Now, if we went organic, that would be generally with some sort of plant matter that makes up that nitrogen that's gonna help us fertilize the top of each of these. The thing is, is that there's none that's very, very strong, so it's gonna take a whole lot longer. So, just hypothetically, if you would like to, <laughs> you could save your own urine in bottles for a couple of months and then treat the top of each straw bale for about a month to lead up to the time that you're going to plant in it. Or for 14 days, which is less than half of that time, we can treat it with inorganic fertilizer that is high in nitrogen. So that's the route we're taking <laughs> for this particular garden. I've gone ahead and gotten 3400 are the numbers that are going to be on this fertilizer. That just means it's super high in nitrogen and very little else. And we would never want the plants to come in contact with that because it would just burn them. It wouldn't, it wouldn't do well at all. But it's going to quickly help break down these straw bales into just the right consistency to be like almost like virgin soil that's just ready and, and pure perfect for the seeds that are going to be planted here. So for the first six days, each day I'm going to spread one half of a cup of this nitrogen across the top of each of these straw bales. Half a cup carefully all, especially in the center, but all along the tops of each of them. Then I'm going to water them so thoroughly that I see the water coming out the bottom. This is going to be the longest preparation that you that the longest time you have to spend in preparing these bales but it will be worth every bit of your effort on the front end so that you don't have to hardly acknowledge them at all the rest of the summer just keep in mind you're you're buying your freedom and your <laughs> vegetables for later so half a cup the first day of nitrogen and then the second day just let it rest but also water it water it water it until it comes out the bottom of the, each straw bale day three go ahead and put nitrogen on the top again half a cup on each bale and water it thoroughly till it comes out the bottom day four just let it rest from the nitrogen but water it thoroughly again till it comes out the bottom day five guess what more nitrogen <laughs> we're going to put that across the tops and then we will uh, water it really well and day six we will just water them again now, day seven and eight, you're going to cut that amount of nitrogen in half. So now we're just gonna spread one fourth of a cup of nitrogen across the top of each of these. One fourth cup, water it well. One fourth cup, water it well. And then the last days, we're going to go ahead and set your nitrogen aside. It's already been as shocked as it can on, on the tops of these. Now we're going to just put on a nice, very well-rounded fertilizer all across the tops of these. So we're going to spread usually 10-10-10 fertilizer or 12-12-12. Some people, I've heard all different versions of it. You do whatever works for you, but I've got 12-12-12 that we're gonna use on this garden. We'll just spread that around the tops of each of these and let it soak in for a couple of days. And by day 14, we'll finally be ready to plant all of those little seedlings. Now, I can't show you all of that today, obviously. So in a future video, we will show you the process of how those have gotten started and where we're going with this garden. But I wanted to just get you started with me on the front end so that you can have the same experience and grow with me your own straw bale garden. Once you've got drawn out on the blueprint graph paper exactly what your dream garden looks like and how big you want it and how many bales you need to have, 
then you want to do a little bit of a budget because it's important depending on where you live this could be very cost prohibitive or very inexpensive so keep that in mind and don't overdo it because between the seeds that you're going to get between the different items that are needed to make this a success i want you to have the first year be wonderful so mark down each of the costs and i'll say this the straw bales that you're going to get are going to range from anywhere between one dollar to six dollars that's a pretty big range mine that i got this time were three dollars and 75 cents from a local farmer and i would recommend you find a local farmer who doesn't spray a lot of pesticides on his crops so that you don't have a lot of chemicals that you're trying to work against with the hay that you get or the straw that you get if i were to go to a big box store like say lowe's or home depot they would have what i need but often they can charge five and six dollars for just one bale of, of straw and that's a lot especially this garden right here that you're looking at required exactly 20 bales so that would have been a lot of money spent right on the front end for that to water thoroughly it's going to take you quite a while and attention on each bale to make sure that that water comes out the bottom this is imperative and you cannot skip this process but you've got two options you can either get a nice wand with kind of a shower head and just go back and forth slowly 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 on each of the bales and I would recommend you do that the very first time so that you can visually see it coming out the bottom but then after that if it's easier for you you can get something like this flat soaker hose that I've purchased and string it all around the tops of each of these bales and let it just run for a couple of hours if you've got that kind of rain water to work with wherever you live go ahead and if you've got water to use just let it soak for a couple of hours and by the end of about two or three hours you're going to see the water coming out the bottom of the of the uh, bales and you won't have had to sit out and babysit it for the whole entire time so this can be a big time saver but i think this one cost me somewhere around 15 bucks or maybe it was even close to 20 but it is another expense that you don't have to make if you don't have that kind of money now there's no way we can cover all of the adventures you're going to have when you do your very first straw bale garden but i want to encourage you to go out and get some and try anyway in fact you're going to have a lot of different phases that you go through in that 14 days. There will be an ugly, awkward in-between phase where your bales look horrible. Don't worry, that's normal. Also, you might actually see kind of chia growing on the top of everything. That's just fine. It's those seeds that are starting to come to life that were already in the hay bale itself. And if you don't want them there, the easy way to get rid of them is with just a dilution of some vinegar and water spritzed, not deep on the hay bale itself or straw bale, but right on the little green grasslets that are growing and that'll take care of them and they'll just go away quickly. Also, when you near the end of that 14 days, you're gonna see probably a few little toadstools pop up and some little um, mushrooms. That's great. That means that the soil is almost perfect for new seeds to go into it and there are other things you're going to encounter and i can't wait to hear about them so between now and next week i hope you'll go out and get yourself a good pair of work gloves i hope you round up your grandmother's straw hat because you're going to need some shade from the sun and if she had a green thumb maybe it will help you at least psychologically in the process i also hope you'll subscribe if you haven't and share this video with someone that you love Get yourself a straw bale or two to just experiment with and have fun with and, and learn from. And let's meet back here next week. Until I see you again, God bless you and go out and intentionally be a blessing to someone today. Hey there, before you go, I wanna share with you just a couple of verses of scripture. This is in the book of 1 Corinthians. Paul wrote it, and this is in chapter 2, verses 18 through 20. It says this, Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks he is wise in this age, let him become a fool, so that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, He catches the wise in their, in their craftiness, and again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, 
that they are futile. So let no one boast in men. Now go spread the word. <laughs>